and it's our joy to welcome you once again to our People's Church online service and very specially today as it happens to be Christmas and what a glorious moment that we can celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ as he came to this earth to bring salvation to all mankind. Would you please join me in prayer as we commit this service to our precious Lord. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and the message it carries about the birth of a Savior, the Savior of the world, the light of the world, our blessed Lord and Savior himself who was born to bring your presence down to man, O God. We thank you that in the gospel story in the Bible, in the Christmas story in the Bible, that Lord, we are, the, our Savior is called by the name Jesus. He's called by the name Emmanuel, which means God, with us. He is proclaimed as the King of the Jews and he is called the Messiah. And we thank you 
for the birth of Jesus Christ, our precious Savior and your Son, O God. Lord, bless this service today. May it bring new hope, Lord, to people, encouragement and strength, and also create in each one a celebration in their hearts, Lord, for the birth of our dear Lord. I pray your blessing upon this service in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, friends, it's Christmas, and today the worship team of People's Church will be bringing you some beautiful Christmas songs, so please listen, enjoy, and be blessed by them, and sing along wherever you can. So let me hand over to the choir and the worship team of People's Church. Oh, 
Thank you, People's Church Choir and our worship team. And I know that every one of you would have been blessed by the wonderful singing that you heard as they brought out those beautiful Christmas songs deep into your heart today. God is with us in this service. And you know, even in the midst of all the Christmas celebration, we do know that there are people who are still struggling with life's challenges. There are those who have lost loved ones this year who are no longer with them at Christmas time. There are those battling health problems. There are those who have financial challenges. There are those who are looking for answers to the questions in their life. And there are many lonely people who may be all alone even today on Christmas Day. So let me pray right now and ask God to keep his hand of grace and blessing upon you on this beautiful day. Shall we pray? Loving Father, I want to lift up everyone watching this service, Lord, who may be battling a challenge in their life right now. Maybe they are grieving the loss of a loved one. Lord, give them comfort, give them strength. May they are battling, maybe they are battling a sickness, Lord. Oh Lord, touch them and give them your healing, O oh God. Lord, maybe they are battling some other challenge in their life. And I pray that they would see that the God of, 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 of Christmas is the God who can bring deliverance into their lives, O oh God, and bring the answer that they are looking for. Lord, I want to pray for anyone who may be all alone today. Maybe they have no one to talk to or no one to be with. Lord, may your presence fill their home, I pray, O oh God. And I pray that no matter what challenge, anyone may be facing right now as they watch this program that you will reach out to them in your love and your power Lord and your comfort and give them all the grace that they require at this very moment Lord I pray and ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord Lord I also pray for our nation of Sri Lanka as we remember that the Christmas message is a message of peace of joy and of love that all these qualities will begin to blossom out in our nation, Lord, in the days ahead, Father. Keep your hand of blessing upon our nation too, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, at this time, keep your hearts open 
as Pastor Dishan Vikramaratna comes to bring you a very powerful message from the Word of God on this Christmas day. I'm sure that message is going to bring great hope into your heart as well. Today, you know, I want to, for a few moments, talk to you about what's all this fuss about Christmas. Why is there such a fuss about Christmas? You and I know that December 25th is not the day Jesus was born. It's the day that we use to celebrate the fact that he was born. He came as a human being. He came to take the sins of the world upon himself. The story of Christmas cannot only be talked about Christmas and stop. We have to take it right up to the cross. He died on a cross because historically it tells you that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness for sin. And Jesus Christ came so that you and I will be free. You know, Christmas is the largest celebration in the world. Most events get one day of remembrance. Have you noticed the Christmas uh, or Christmas uh, celebration goes on for a whole month? One in 12 months. And you wonder what all this fuss is about. People put up their normal routines and everything aside. And they have parties and they are giving gifts and they are celebrating and, and some celebrate a little too much, you know, when they take those little shots. And so many things happen. But Christmas time is also with the party, the cake, the gifts, and of course, Santa Claus which I don't like to talk too much about. Not, I think Santa Claus is great and happy, but sometimes we have replaced the true meaning of Christmas with a bit of a Santa Claus. And on the other side, in the December season, we have the most number of suicides. We have the most antidepressants that are taken. When somebody dies and, and that, that loss is there, it's remembered mostly in the December season. What's all the fuss? One thing when Christmas comes, you can't miss it. It's everywhere. You know, if you stop to think for a moment, what's astounding is that the simple, unassuming birth of a peasant boy in the Middle East born 2,000 years ago, has caused such commotion. His birthday even causes traffic jams in Singapore, in Rio de Janeiro, in New York. Why? Have you also realized, I've, I've shared with you this before, every time you write a date on a checkbook or a letter, now we don't send letters too much, so it's on the email, every time you write a date, you know, history is divided into before Christ and I know Domini, right, AD. It, 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 it divides you to the place of Jesus' birth. Even when you look at your birthday, it's measured from the birthday of Jesus. What's all the fuss? Let me quickly take you to the first Christmas. The Bible gives the original story in one of my favorite portions about Christmas that we read in the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, please listen to verses 10 to 12 as the angels come to where the shepherds were. And the shepherds were in fear. And this was the message of the angels. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. So the angels come and the first thing they say is fear not. Now, 2,000 years later, in 2022, I want to tell you, fear not. Some of you are fearing about your marriage. Some of you are saying, 
let's just survive let's go on some of you are you know with covid and everything else that has happened the financial mess and you're trying to get out of it we are facing so many things in our world that we don't have control over but you see we have all the questions but sometimes we don't have the answer i want to tell those of you very specially who are visiting with us maybe even for the first time we are not talking about religion we are not even talking about a church i want to tell you religion is something i believe is man made we put our bunch of rules and philosophies and we said this religion is this this is that this is our religion we put a fence around it and said this is how it is i want to tell you god is not concerned about religion but god is concerned about you god is concerned about you that's why the angel said fear not i bring you good tidings because today is born to you a savior a savior for your marriage a savior for your economy a savior for whatever you are going through and i believe this i'm telling you please you don't ever have to come back to this church it's not about church it's not about religion but take the christ of christmas a lot of us have an xmas the unknown factor is x but actually christmas is because of christ they take the christ of christmas with you and see what god can do you know we don't bring you here to celebrate christmas with a christmas message if it was a theory i want to tell you but god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son for you and for me christmas today like i said is sometimes more hassle than happiness more pressure than pleasure it's a duty most of the time and not a delight i can ask some of you how stressed you are about giving the christmas gifts Oh my goodness got to get this got to get that you see we we taken everything okay it's fine but have good time but that's not the essence of it christmas reminds us of losses and hurts but three things very quickly this christmas you got to know this christmas the first thing you got to know that god loves you god loves you god has no ethnic boundaries and no religious boundaries god loves every human being that's why in john 3:16 which i said earlier it says god loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life god loves you he loves you the way you are you don't have to become somebody for god to love you you don't have to reach a particular standard i say this all the time here people's church is not a hotel for the righteous it's a hospital for the sinner You know why? Because if you're looking for perfect people, we don't have them here. Especially this guy. None of us are perfect. The Bible says we have all fallen short of God's glory because of sin. And God wants you to know whoever you are that he loves you. He loves you. And to communicate his love, he came to earth. You know if God wanted to communicate to birds he would have come as a bird. If God wanted to communicate to cats he would have come as a cat. But God wanted to communicate to human beings you and I so he came and he was born in a manger and then he went to a cross. He also didn't send an angel to communicate. He didn't send a prophet. He didn't send a politician or an ambassador. he came himself because the message was so important that he himself came to let you know that you don't have to fear anymore if you will give him an opportunity in your life if you will open your heart to him why am i saying that you're saying okay if god is there then why you know why because god doesn't force himself on any one of us because then we'll become puppets but god gives us a choice to choose The Bible tells us that God is love. It doesn't say God has love, but God is love. That's the character of God. He loves you. He loves me in spite of ourselves. He never loves you on your bad days as much as he loves you on your good days. He loves you when you're feeling him and when you're not. He loves you in the middle of your failures and he loves you when he succeeds. 
let me tell you this one thing that i say all the time there is one thing that you cannot do and that is that you cannot stop god from loving you you can say i've done this i've done that god knows god didn't come for the righteous he didn't come for the one who's done it all right he came for us like me who have failed who are weak and he showed us his love you see god's love is not based on our performance it's based on his character it's based on who he is not our conduct listen to ephesians 3:19 ephesians 3:19 in god's word may you experience the love of christ though it is too great to understand fully then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from god i want you to know that god loves you secondly i want you to know this christmas that god is with you you see when you open your heart to him he is with you sometimes you don't feel like it you know god's presence in your life and your feeling don't go together sometimes after a meeting like this one you have a good feeling and then what happens you go and you get into the bus and somebody steps on your toes the feeling goes away you see it's not a feeling it's a reality that god loves you sometimes our feeling come out of our emotional state our hormones of what we ate last night the medication we are on whether we slept properly or not so you don't go by feelings you go by the truth the fact that god loves you and god is with you psalm 139 7 and 8 say this i can never escape from your spirit i can never get away from your presence if i go up to heaven you are there if i go down to the grave you are there i want to tell you no matter where god is there god is there you may have been abandoned in life maybe some of you are here because your spouse left you or maybe you've been abandoned by your parents or you've gone through some tough situations where some of the greatest friendships in your life have been broken i want to tell you everyone has faced pain heartache rejection in some way maybe you're still here and you're saying you know i have i still have the sting of racial discrimination in my life gender prejudice religious intolerance if so i'm really sorry i'm sorry for the pain you have been through but i want to tell you god has not abandoned you how many can say amen god has not abandoned you he never will one of my favorite promises to hold on to is in hebrews 13:5 cuz god has said i will never leave you i will never abandon you god will never leave you that's why at people's church we never fail to give this message you know why we are all strugglers we don't have perfect people in this church we have all strugglers who came and 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 said lord man has failed we have failed we need you because you care for us you gave your life for us and the final thing this christmas i want you to know that god is for you god is for you god is not against you you know sometimes we have a hard time you seen the exodus in our country seen the airports full i just was in dubai some time ago we have a church over there and to see the number of people who come and st- are stranded they can't even get a job but they're trying 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 to get away trying to find the answer i want to tell you if you read the word of god it will tell you what kind of era you're living in we may be shocked at what's going on we may be rubbing our hands and saying my goodness covid came now look at this has come and that is happening but god's word is clear i am not promoting religion here because religion means nothing but god means everything i want to tell you god has no religious boundaries but god loves man god so loved the world he loved each one that's why jesus came 
gave his life i want to tell you today you got to know that god is for you 365 times in the bible god says don't be afraid fear not for every day of the year you have one fear not we don't know what we're going to face but i want to tell you god is not mad at you god loves you the next verse in john 3:16 we know god so loved the world john 3:17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him friend listen to me i am not promoting religion but this christmas this time when we can gather together and also some of you may never hear this message if not for a program like this i want to tell you even if you never come back here again it's okay but please give god an opportunity in your life not religion not even christianity give god an opportunity in your life god so loved you he gave his son so that somebody will pay the price for sin and that's why he came don't be afraid i want you to res- listen to this real life story i want shamil to come and and share this real life story of what what happened in his life and what god did for him good evening uh for those of you all who don't know me uh my name is shamil pereira and i've been a christian all my life uh i grew up in a christian home but uh, growing up church was my most least favorite place because i always had to i never fit in i was different and i always felt like i had to conform to the likeness of church folk and to fit in and to be accepted by them um don't get me wrong i believed in god but i just didn't like being around church church people so what i did was i completely just stopped going to church and ran the other way at a very early age i started drinking i started smoking i started getting high on drugs with my friends and being in meaningless relationships and living life at that point what i thought was the best life you could live you know a normal life but when i woke up every morning i was i always felt empty always felt alone and there was something in me that nothing could fill um then one day a friend of mine came up to me and told me hey why don't you come and uh, for this meeting a meeting just like this a smaller meeting though come for this prayer meeting or bible meeting and come and see you know just come and in my head i was like you know at at that point i had been to every church every meeting you could ever think about but i thought hey what why not let's go and prove this one wrong as well but when i went for that meeting i met some guys and some girls that were just like me but they had found true joy true peace peace that i could never that i never experienced before and i really wanted that but you know like in life when things start getting good there's always another curveball that comes at you a few years later a close friend of mine passed away and at the same time uh, i came out of a really really bad relationship and because of this i had to remove myself from the comfort zone of my friends because it was all a similar circle and i just felt so alone i know what you're thinking i would have gone back to the life i was living but no this is when i truly decided that i need to find jesus to pursue jesus because i knew that only he can fill my emptiness 
a few years down, God changed my life. I, I cannot explain what that feeling is. It's the most unbelievable feeling. And I know that so many of you all know what I'm talking about. It's not like any high or it's not like anything I've ever felt. But the love of Jesus transformed me. You know, I always thought that you have to be a certain someone, be a certain way to be loved by Jesus. But Jesus loved me, not when I was standing on this stage or not when I was sitting in this congregation. He loved me, not when I was outside that door, but he showed his love for me 2,000 years ago when he stretched his arms out and died for me. Today I can tell you one thing, that I am truly blessed to be standing here. and close your eyes. 
just for a moment. I want to tell you what man cannot do, God can do. If you're looking for Santa, Rudolph, goodies, chocolates, cherub cheeks, red noses, then I'd advise you to go to the North Pole. But if you are looking for an answer, you're looking for peace that goes beyond your understanding. You're looking for truth and joy and purpose. You're looking for forgiveness for what has happened. Things that you feel you can't change, I won't tell you, come to the Christ of Christmas. He loves you. He loves you just the way you are. This is not about religion or church. It is about God loving me, loving you, loving everyone here. But you see, God will never force himself on you because we have to make him our choice. He doesn't want us to be puppets. He wants us to choose him. My advice to you today is give God an opportunity to touch your life. Give God an opportunity to forgive you of all your sins. That's why Jesus, after being born, went to a cross. He shed his blood so that once and for all, you and I can have forgiveness and we can start again and we can start with Christ in our life. While you keep your heads bowed, eyes closed, we're coming to the most important time of this meeting tonight where you get an opportunity if you have not done so already to choose Christ in your life or to reject him. I would like to encourage you to take this opportunity because we don't know how many more opportunities will come our way. Time and opportunity waits for no man. And I would like you, where you are, to take this opportunity and say, Lord, I want to give you this time for you to come into my heart. If you will invite the Lord Jesus tonight, he'll come in where you are. He'll forgive you of all sin. He'll take the, come into the throne room of your life. I don't know about you, but it's very hard to steer my own life in this mess I'm living in. But that's why I need God. Keep your heads bowed, your eyes closed for a moment, and let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I have heard your word, and I'm acknowledging you as Lord. I need you in my life. I need all my sins forgiven. Lord, you were born, then you shed your blood so that my sins can be forgiven. Cleanse my mind, cleanse my heart, cleanse my whole being. Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart and take over my life and be the Lord of my life. I surrender to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dishan, for that inspiring message on this Christmas day. And I know that you were encouraged, you were strengthened, and you were blessed as Pastor Dishan brought you that word from the Holy Scriptures. And before we close the service today, here's another beautiful Christmas song for you to enjoy. The stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul 
Join us as we sing the remaining verses of Silent Night.
Well, that's about it today for our Christmas Day service. Thank you for joining us. And I believe that you would have been greatly blessed by being a part of the People's Church online Christmas service. Before we close, I would like to bring you a couple of announcements. And the first one is about Lanka Lifeline. If you know anybody who's battling emotional challenges, maybe battling depression, maybe going through some challenges of stress that they can't handle by themselves, would you please encourage them to call the Lanka Lifeline on the number given on your screen right now? Because if they do call, somebody will be on the other end of the line to talk to them and if necessary, even to pray with them and to give them encouragement and strength. So please do call if you have that need or if you know someone who needs to talk to somebody, please get them to call the Lanka Lifeline. Finally, our watch night service will be held on December 31st at 10 p.m. at number 306 Parakrama Road, Paliogoda. So we encourage you to join us if you aren't going anywhere else for a watch night service. Please do come along at 10 p.m. Uh, to our center at Paliogoda. And I know that you'll be blessed by the watch night service as you join together with everyone else to worship the Lord. Well, that's about it for today on our Christmas Day service. Thank you once again for joining us. And I pray that you and your family would have a truly blessed Christmas, not only today, but right through this season as well. May God bless you and may the season of joy and peace and hope and love fill your hearts right through this day. Blessed Christmas to you and have a great week in Jesus Christ our Lord.